Hi, Dylan Ross. Welcome to 10 by 6. Hello, Jason. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely our pleasure, Dylan. Dylan, for those of people who haven't come across you before, you're a performance poet. So, uh, yeah, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Tell us, tell us what it, that actually is, what it actually means. Oh, well, um, I guess it's it's a poet. So I, I write I write poems, um, but I write them specifically for being performed. Um, so, you know, you can read them on the page and hopefully they, they have they make some sort of sense. Um, but really, when I write them, I write them, I read them again. I find I find a rhythm and I find a way. And for me, it's about um, standing up um, and trying to sort of get that feedback with an audience and performing them live. Um, and so I'm not I'm not one for uh, writing precise um, stanzas or iambic pentameter or any of that sort of stuff. But hopefully there's a, a natural rhythm that comes from um, the writing and rewriting and, and then and then performing. And then I will rewrite after performances. So um, they're quite um, uh, ever evolving, my, my poetry. They, they, it's, uh, it can change from one performance to the next. Cool. And you, you refer to the, the iambic pentameter there, which obviously goes back to Chaucer. And I guess Chaucer was one of the first performance poets, <laughs> was he not? It was certainly the, more, the sort of medieval age, if you like. Yes, yeah, yeah. I think um, I, I sometimes refer to uh, oh, a, a, a more proficient and better poet than I am, uh, speaks about the Harlem School and how this is very much um, the, the rap music and, and things came from. And Gil Scott Heron uh, was obviously the main guy from. And we look at perhaps performance poetry as being a, a more recent development. But then before that, you have the beat poets who were standing up and they were they were playing with jazz in the background. And, and then before that, you've got, um, you know, taking each generation and, and, and decades and centuries back to Chaucer. Every poet is there looking for an audience and, and looking to connect with, with someone on a, on a very, um, very human level. Um, so yes, Chaucer and uh, the, the the other musicians that were traveling and performing, they were they were doing so because it was very much a um, uh, a folk storytelling as well. Yes. You know, I think there's a there's a, a large element of storytelling in in what I do, um, and I'm only doing it through because I sort of got, got into it through storytelling. Um, and I think that's yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Chaucer was standing up and, and doing it, and um, so although I'm kind of going, yeah, I'm a modern performance poet, it's it's a tradition that goes all the way back and beyond Chaucer, I'm sure. You know, it goes back to the 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 um the storytellers in in the tribes who would would, you know, the guys would go out and they would go hunting and they'd come back and the the storyteller would pick up the the bits and pieces and then would retell the story of the hunt to to everyone else around the fire. And, and so it's it's a very it's a very natural human thing i think um yes and so it's it's um, yes. it's an honor to be able to, to be able to do it yes i mean just to talk you know referring to the iambic pentameter it, it's that da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. is it possible i mean can any poem be performed is it just about the the, the poet creating the rhythm or are there some poems um, do you think that can just simply have to be read um, I think I think there's some that, that well, I think there's a lot of, of great um, poetry and prose which um, has been written um, in a way that, that you get most out of it if you're reading it on the page. Um, and I think uh, it's probably more true of, of prose, but I think there's a lot of a lot of poetry is written um, with sight in mind and very clever. And I mean, you look at something like E. Cummins, who uh, particularly uses text and formatting and and um, things like that on the page to to draw your eye and to cause you to do other things. I know um, um, motion does as well. And, and there's all there's all sorts of there's all sorts of really clever ways you can use um, the printed word to convey um, a message and meaning that you just can't do. You can't do if you're if you're reading it out. So so I think there's there's both. Yeah. Yes, and I didn't realise until quite recently that um, Dylan Thomas is under milk wood he had 11 different versions um and, 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 I, and i do wonder whether when he came to, to to stand in front of an audience whether he preferred certain versions over others 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I know a little. I know a little about that. I was reading about it recently and how um, he he does actually credit um, Richard Burton. I think for for actually yes. sort of bringing it together. When when um, I mean it's a play for voices, isn't it? And and I think when um, Thomas realised that it was he could put his words into other people or other people could speak his words that that allowed him to kind of release it and after like you say yeah a decade or more of, of sort of struggling with it um and i've read things where he was he was quite rude about it you know right writing um to family and friends sort of saying oh you know this this, this blooming play oh, oh. um and yeah i mean obviously tragic that he never really got to see it um, performed yes. in its in its complete, um, but also in a way, I mean, still tragic, but also in a way that there's there's something as anyone that the writes or makes music or makes art. I think sometimes once you've you've done it, there's a sense of of release and and it's out there. Yes. And I think perhaps we can um, we can take that as a as a good thing for Dylan Thomas yes. that he he knew he'd finished it. So yes. Um, now one of your main inspirations is is Luke Wright. So tell us tell us what it is yes. about Luke and what it is about your poetry and where they, where they overlap, so to speak, in terms of style or content, etc. Uh, yeah, I think um, oh a bit of a bit of both really. Um, uh, when I first came across Luke Wright, I was very much um, enamoured with his um, delivery and his humour. Um, and I think that's that's a, a key component of what Luke does. Um, I mean, I, I make no bones about it. I think Luke is amazing and probably the best poet in the country right now. Sorry, every other poet. Um, but he he has a um, an honesty of his delivery, um, and I think perhaps uh, his voice. And you know, he's uh, he's a little bit further east than me, but I'm a Thames Valley boy, and uh, the way he delivers. Um, it's it, it's recognizable to my ear that's that's the voice that i understand um but it's just his humor and he can package a lot of very um succinct and important statements or what i would believe to be important statements um in into a, um what on the surface is a pithy throwaway one-liner but actually it's it's really quite profound and um it it's that for me that um i could see uh, a lyrical um and the humour in what Luke Wright does that that I found so inspiring. And when I first started sort of writing um, and performing poetry, I thought, well, hang on a minute, I'm I am I aping him? And I thought, well, no, actually, it's just that's an influence on me. That's um, um, what I'm very very proud to sort of say is is a, an influence. And I think I think he's great, and everyone should go and see him. Um, I, what I also love about Luke is that he is able to do. Um, something like Essex Lion, which um, if you don't know Essex Lion, people really should go out and, and check that one out. because that, that's I think he's done like three versions of it or three chapters of it now. Um, but it's it's hilarious. And at, and at points you think he maybe he's been a little bit um, cruel to the characters in it, but you can see he relates. You know, there's something in him in all of those people as well. Um, uh, but he can do that. And then he does these long form political um, poetry plays which are incredibly powerful and, and very deep. Um, and I think that's really interesting that they all sound like Luke Wright. You know, that's, it's always his voice, um, even though it might be um, something quite humorous or something quite political or something like dark or something very personal, they all sound like Luke. And I think anyone that's doing anything, poetry, art, music, or just, you know, your normal day-to-day -day work, you can have a look at how Luke puts himself into everything. That's really quite inspiring. Yes. Um, I, I, as you know, I saw um, Luke quite recently supporting John Cooper Clark. Um, and we've been following Luke for, for a long time. And it's almost like, you know, you, you see the quality of his, his performances on the stage. And yet when you go back, he's now just turned 40. But when you go back to when he was writing in his early to mid 20s, which is, I think, when we first started to get into him. He was brilliant then. Do you know what I mean? He, he, you know, it was almost like a dragster, you know, from naught to 100 in three seconds. You know, it was it's incredible yes. because usually you do see that process, don't you? Where they, they where they get rid of the rough edges. But with Luke, there was almost no rough edges from, from when we entered into his domain, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's he's always been a, um, 
yeah, as far as I'm aware, just a, a consummate performer. And um, yes, absolutely. And, uh, and and I think there's a there's an element of um, uh, he's he's very honest about his confidence. He has to be incredibly confident and very very well polished um, to do what he does. But I think there's always an element of um, fragility um, there. There's the, again that that human level. It, it feels like there's a real person doing this. It's not. Um, although he's obviously done do these big sort of hour long plays or whatever that, that rhyme, um, he holds it together. It feels very fresh every time he does it, and that's a rare skill, I think. So, in terms of your own performance poetry, um, what's your sort of you know your short to medium term, even long term future and aspirations? Uh, well, it'd be, it'd be nice to sort of. Um, I, like I say, the, the the key to doing this is is being able to connect with people. And I think that's that's the most in, in important and wonderful thing is that um, I go out there, stand on stage, do my thing, and um, to to get that instant reaction is is really really wonderful. And you know, complete honesty that that feels good. You know, that's a nice feeling. You, know? it's, um, you go on stage and you're nervous and um, you're worried that people are going to be um, think well. Oh, Oh God! You know, there's a there's a poet. I I often perform with bands and at gigs, yeah. and often often sort of the only poet on the on the bill, or you know whatever, and or in a pub at you know eight thirty on a Saturday night in a pub, and you think, well, are people gonna uh, shut up and listen? And thankfully they don't. You know, they don't. They carry <laughs> on as if as if I was um, you know as if I was playing guitar in the corner or a band, and that's kind of what I want. I want to be able to sort of um, connect people in that way and if and if you hear people sort of quiet down and you get a few snatches of, of conversation still but people actually sort of tune in then that's that's amazing so I'm very happy to continue doing what I'm doing um, playing with um, other musicians other poets I mean there's some amazing poets out there we're very lucky in this area in the, in the southwest as well there's some really really good poets out there um, but to keep playing with these um, with these other acts and to keep supporting um, uh, things that I believe in, you know, I'm 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 very much uh, I like I like to go out there. This is this is what I can do. I can kind of do some sort of well, <laughs> maybe maybe people disagree, but I think you know I could do I could sort of um, do these poems. Hopefully, people will enjoy them, get something from them, maybe maybe connect, have a laugh. Um, Kind of go yeah right on man um and if and hopefully that's enough to inspire people to do um things for themselves and do do other bits and pieces and and i'm very much about connection so the more gigs i can do more festivals the more bits and pieces um the better because i just want to go out there and, and do it and meet people yeah and obviously it's, you know, when we had a conversation um a couple of weeks ago when we met up and obviously covid played a, a very dramatic part not only in in, in your opportunities for performance poetry, but in, in a lot of artists across the board uh, suddenly found yeah, themselves, yeah. you know, locked in, so to speak. Um, so it, it must be, you know, a, a, that opportunity that, that, I suppose there's a little bit of positivity, there's a, that opportunity for, for you to be able to, to write, or, or do you do things differently? And um, do, you, do you have to have an event that you write for, or, or are you you're just much more free in your flow? um no i i'm i'm very much i i need a deadline um something to write for um uh yeah i think i said earlier that i came out of um a storytelling that was how i first got into this so there was a storytelling night um in bridport west dorset where i live um and it's in the local pub and basically it was it was storytelling you had to go along there's no no paper allowed and, and all the rest of it so you couldn't read anything so um, and I started writing poetry for that. So they were storytelling poems that fit. And there was always a theme for the evening. So, you know, a Valentine's poem, if you like, or, um, you know, Halloween or, or, or whatever. There's always sort of a general theme or March and spring and all, the, all these things. So that gave me focus. And I, I think I'm one of those um, creatives that the, the tighter the focus, the more restrictions, the freer. I feel if you just say, "Oh, write what you like, write anything," which was a problem sort of during lockdown in some in some respects. It was like, "Oh, well, there's nothing to aim for. You just do what you want." 
and that was like oh, i don't know i don't know what i want um, so having having a something to write for um an event a um uh, yeah it, it gives it it certainly gives me the focus um yeah and that's that's how i write and, and most of the poems i have that i've written over the last sort of four five years um they've all been written for something um and then, which is great because a lot of them, you then go, well, that that's done. And that that sort of is a little time capsule. Um, and then you find a year or so later, oh, it's relevant again, or, you know, and I'll tweak it and I'll, and I'll do it. And then there's others which have sort of become part of my set. So, yes. Um, but yeah, having having the opportunity to go out and, and play again is, is amazing because it's it's it gets the creative juices going again. Yeah, absolutely. Well, before we hear one of those creative um, poems that you've, you've constructed, um, which we're going to finish off with today. How how can people find you? I mean, we, we will have you know links at the bottom of the video when people click on it. But you know, in a sort of a in a verbal sense, how can how can yeah exactly? <laughs> how can people find you? Where where are you based online and, and et cetera et cetera? Uh, so um, yeah, I have um, I have a website. I mean, you know, websites. How often do you you update them? <laughs> you know, so uh, that's that's DylanRoss.co.uk. Um, but then also Dylan Ross poet um, on the old Facebook. Um, so available available on the socials. Um, and then um, because because I'm terrible at self promotion, uh, as I think a lot of creatives are as well. You know, you kind of go ah right. Oh, I'm exactly. doing that thing. I must tell everyone about it. Oh, I, oh, I need to. Oh, I haven't told him in the right way. Um, but yeah, there, there's um, there's there's often a lot of events. I mean, there's um, uh, Bripport is having Bard Fest coming up on the 20th of August. Um, just doing a short slot there, but that's great because there's a lot. There's a whole evening of fantastic performers all doing just sort of little little slots. Um, that has a good cause as well. That's um, a, one of the Ukrainian appeals. So. Um, that should be a great night, but there's there's often there's often events on. So if if you can get on um, the socials and find me there, um, yeah. Dylan Ross poet, then should be able to sort of um, find find sort of updates of what's happening. There's a few there's a few things online as well, but uh, yeah. So. Brilliant. Well, well, thank you so much, Dylan, for coming on the show. It's been absolutely it's been pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> and you're now going to finish what's the name of this poem okay um so this is uh this is gig life um and very much relates to what we talked about earlier about um not being able to perform and um not being able to go and see um bands play uh, it's a very important part of what i do so brilliant well, ladies and gentlemen folks i'd like to present dylan ross reading Gig Life. Thank you so much again, Dylan. Thank you, Jason. This place was coming like a ghost town. No gigs planned, house parties banned, DJs hanged, panic on the streets, no safe place to meet. The sound of confusion, sowing division, sowing fear under pressure, fear the reaper. Kind of funny, kind of sad. What a wonderful world, a world gone mad. Tears for those fears, tears of a clown, let it all come down, not going out the sound of now. And artists marginalised, musicians stigmatised, and against this backdrop of legitimised and government sanctioned cultural violence, the deafening sound of silence. Hallelujah. A message to you, a tower of song, what's going on? A change is surely going to come. And it goes like this. The fourth, the fifth, the minor falls, the major lifts. All together now, get up, stand up in our darkest hour, raw power of live music. Use it or lose it. And it's the same thing with live music and our beautiful venues gone in a blink of an eye and no one wonders why. An assault on our freedom to go mental in a ballroom or an old cinema or a cellar or a club or the back of a pub or the front if there's room enough or a dance hall or scout hut to let loose and forget it all to dance yourself free dance if you want to free your mind and your ass will follow dance like no one's watching dance like no one cares throw your hands up in the air body pumping foot stomping live music 
to lose yourself in the moment, the mosh and the movement, bodies pushing and shoving, slam dancing and pogoing, elbows nestling and jostling, two stepping in Doc Martins. House minds, house spiders, red spiders, spiders from Mars, driving cars on autobahns, gear change in your brain, insane membrane, a lad insane T-Rex, hoople, all the young dudes, all the single ladies. Boys with guitars, shy guys, tomboys, hip chicks, piano men, riot girls with wry smiles and turn ups for miles. New jeans, baggy jeans, blue jeans, skinny jeans, ripped jeans, billy jeans, jean jeans, blue means whoa, black bellies. And don't mix the blue smarties. White horses, wild stallions, black beauties, deaf cat cuties, call cool for cats, black jacks, leopard skin, pill blocks, hats, ace of spades, legs for days, shaved on the way. Hiya, Holly, Layla, Lola. Cherry Cola, Cherry Bomb, Cherry Ann, Barbara Ann, tired of waiting for your man to the end and promises that we will meet again. So reach out and I'll be there with a love that will see you through live music. God only knows what we'd be without you. Friend of the band, gig ligger. One of the crew, hanger on, knows all the words to all the songs, get there early, front of stage, squashed up against the barriers, access to all areas, sew a patch, pin badge, gig bag, tote bag, papa got a brand new pig bag, kicking ass, laminated pass, backstage pass, multicolor wristband, signed set list, hit list, hit parade, but it's all one big charade if no music's played. Great pretenders. Smashed up fenders, Marshall stacked, leader of the pact. Seven nations couldn't hold us back. Pack of dogs, diamond souls, back to black. It's only rock and roll. In on four bars in 12, sisters doing it for themselves. Daddy's gone. Killer queens, big fat mamas, hips to scenes, lips like sugar babes, crazy lady marmalade. Common people, all my friends. It looks like we made it. Jusque River deep. Mountain high, I am the resurrection, I am the fly, I am the bad guy. Picking up those good vibrations in the middle of a chain reaction on the eve of destruction. Still can't get no satisfaction, but I try, try, try. Hey Jude, hey Joe, where'd you go with your gun? Why walk the line when you're born to run? Funk soul brothers, fortune sons, slaughtered daughters, smoky waters, champagne skies, start a joke and the whole world cries. But baby, I don't care no more. I'm gonna walk out that door and I bet that you look good on the dance floor. <laughs> so play a called, get sick, get born. Cheap trick, popcorn, mo money, mo problems, no woman, no cry, do what you're told and hope to die before you're old. Good golly, Miss Molly, holy moly and snakes alive. Run, 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 cause you're out of time. What time is love? Where is my mind? And I wanna hold your hand because this land is our land. So forget you, I won't do what you tell me. You've got to fight for your right to party. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much. And the challenge is on now for the watchers to go through and identify every single artist. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be um, absolutely amazing. Brilliant. Thank you again, Dylan. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Cool. See you soon.